today. We dig up the story and hammer out the details of Northland buildings, cabin life shelters that come to life quickly. Hunting is our passion. We're feeling a bit of turkey fever in Minnesota with Banks Outdoors. And have all sorts of action right outside our ground blind. People are passionate about outdoor equipment. Get this, Americans spend more than $20 billion a year on gear. But no one ever really sees how their stuff gets made. Well, that's where we come in. Each week, we throw open the factory doors and give you a behind the scenes look at how your favorite gear is made. Made for the outdoors. Cabin life in Minnesota's iconic North Woods. A different sort of existence where water rules. Yeah, I love lake life, and here on Gull Lake, there's quite a story happening back in the woods. You'll understand when you see how Northland buildings get made for the outdoors. Northland builds post frame structures. Wooden skeletons covered with steel siding, simple buildings that go up swiftly Today's project goes up on client David Riegert's new property, an excited guy who hopes to create cabin storage. This is gonna be awesome. They have toys, they basically don't wanna haul them back to the cities or store them. Yeah, it's just all the, the stuff for the water. The Northland crew starts by laying out the building footprint. to make sure the structure shape is exact and square. Cody Reif and Billy Jenkins move supplies and stage them in place. Team leader Jay Punzak jumps off to start prepping the lumber. Usually by the time he's done drilling holes, I'll have all the outsides cut. Those holes key to pull frame buildings. Drilling holes is so much fun to watch. Cody's got this down to a science. If I've got my numbers right, they're drilling 16 holes, five and a half feet deep to get below that frost line, and they'll be eight feet apart. Really the foundation of the entire project. He makes it look easy. Cody drills and Billy follows with a packing tool. And you're just compacting that, just tamping it down. Nope, now I am. Good. As long as it feels solid. Yep. That looks good. I can make it keep going, but no, that's good. Thanks. <laughs> the hardest part about digging holes, tamping the bottom at the end. I will soon learn that statement is just not true. They have no idea what they're doing here. Sure. I'm not sure David is happy about this. Cody puts me to work. Sorry, Dave, it's just one pull. <laughs> Every post hole must be exact on center and on depth. Now clear it. Did I just get a thumbs up from Cody? I'm trying, I'm trying. Probably not. All right, last chance. 10 minutes and I still can't get my hole quite right. <laughs> Dave, this side might be a little crooked, but don't worry about it. Cody cleans up my mess and gives Dave a shot. This trigger runs the auger. Next time, when you, when you start to hit, come up with just a little bit, use the trigger, and then go back into it. See, it's not so easy. Billy drops a concrete disc into each hole. That saucer stabilizes each post and keeps them in place. Now the building gets its legs, so to speak. One by one, the 16 posts go into place with a most interesting process. Right there. Jay guides posts exactly into place. Well, the corners are very important. 
boards. We, we set boards on them later to keep our distance. If corners are plumbing correct, everything else just falls into place. Love it. It's looking good. Once you have the pole set, then the rest is the rest is pretty simple. Maybe if you're good at math. Yeah, five of each. Just start with an eight, got a sixteen, and then end with a sixteen. And we'll start on that side. We'll start with an eight, sixteen, sixteen. Jay always seems to work one step ahead. Maybe that's part of the reason these buildings go up so quickly, or. A better word might be efficiently. Once you've done one, you know what goes into them and just start cutting. Let's let Jay finish up the prep work. When we come back, this Northland building comes to life. Made for the Outdoors is brought to you by Banks Outdoors, Aquarius Home Services. Ellsworth Cooperative Creamery, Splash, and Husqvarna. Northwoods Lake Life equals relaxation, unless you're part of this crew. Northland Buildings gets busy on David Riegert's new cabin storage. 30 by 40, 12 foot sidewall. So then the doors are that same height. With post drilled and in place, the team goes to work on the structure sides. Then they're gonna start girting up the building. That's the boards on the side of the building. Girding, by definition, means to encircle or surround the structure with bands of wood, essentially to frame up the sides. So the girts really have two roles. Number one, they give the building its stability. And number two, this is what the steel exterior will eventually be attached to. Getting these things up takes uh, a couple of hours. Uh-oh. Uh, hey guys, we have a problem. Actually, just kidding. Look at that, exactly spot on. All this work happens in one full day on the job. But before the crew goes home to rest, they try and set a couple trusses. Pre-built trusses will support the weight of the roof and help define this Northland building. The company's slogan says it all, built tough for the Northland. That'll be a real nice building when it's done. Next morning, the guys are back to work before we even show up and the structure already looks different. They finish the frame and Jay sets the access door. 24 hours in, the building looks like this. The poles are in, the framing is complete, but now the skeleton needs its skin. Once the building's pretty much framed up and nice and straight, they're gonna start putting on the trims, the accessories, putting the steel on. Northland steel, heavy galvanized material covered in Valspar paint. We're working on the soffit and fascia. Now Northland gets to work on the roof. Steel sheets go into place. We're putting this steel on right now. We gotta stretch it a little, straighten it out. Billy does a lot of the high level work with a few perks. Well, it's a lot cooler up here, for one. Still tough on a hot summer day. Now the sides go on. This work is fairly quick and painless. They wrap up by lunchtime. A quick cool down and Jay goes to work on the garage doors. Now it's time to hop in and wrap up the job. Like that, in 18 hours, a Northland building comes to life. The finishing touch. 
both me and Jay usually take pictures of them at the very end. My kids like to see what we've been working on. Northland, it's a quality building at a fair price. These are built tough. By these guys. Nice work. So there you go, two and a half days of work and you end up with the ultimate storage building for sportsmen and women. Northland Buildings, here in the Northwoods, made for the outdoors. Made for the Outdoors is brought to you by Central Boiler, Summit Beer, Ice Castle Fish Houses, Smoky Hills Outdoors Store, and Magnum Research. Welcome to Made for the Outdoors. Harvesting a trophy buck or a monster tom is no easy feat. The ability to deceive is easier said than done, especially these days when wildlife is smarter than ever. Turkeys, they have eyesight way beyond anything a human has. So I mean, you get out and anybody will tell you, you blink when you're out there, you can, they're gonna run, they're gonna catch you. Um, being inside the blind, you can get away with a lot more. It's all about blending in, in this ground blind called the Stump 4 from Banks Outdoors. The Stump 4 is six and a half feet tall and six and a half feet in diameter. It can be your turkey blind, deer stand, and ice fishing shanty all in one. It's made by Banks Outdoors, who are located in Cannon Falls, Minnesota. The business is family owned and operated by the Banks family of five. It's a family company. I have my three sons working for us. My wife is here too, is the office manager, so a very family-based company. Very, very proud to be a part of it with them. My dad brought us up in the passion of the outdoors. As far as hunting goes, I'm certainly the best of the three. There's no question there. That's really not debatable, is it? Parents Bob and Marlene and their three sons, Mitch, Michael, and Dan, live the lifestyle. I've always been an archer. I raised my boys that way, so we're, we just love the outdoors. Together, these guys dream up and design the perfect blind and have done so since 2004. Cannon Falls is the town. The facility, uh, we have 40,000 square feet here. Making such a large product has a number of steps. So the process starts in the machine shop and Dan owns this place pretty much over here. <laughs> this is where the magic happens. This is. is. <laughs> yes, you could say. My youngest son, Dan, he kind of followed my footsteps. He's more hands-on. He's our mold builder. Him and I are building the molds, doing the prototyping, uh, building, building our routing fixtures, drill fixtures, and so on. Bob and Dan are a lot like magicians, turning steel into the perfect mold fortunate to be able to kind of engineer on the go, you know, and that's very huge when coming out with a new product. Just from start to finish, that's really rewarding to see an actual product come out of the mold for the first time. It's neat to come in here because this is where you can actually see the detailing on the inside of the mold. You can see that it says the stump. One of the reasons I went with the round blind because if you look in the woods, everything's round. There is no square boxes. And uh, I think a deer will look at a, a square box blind and say, oh, that looks human. It blends in so much better. And we put a bark pattern on all our products. It's kind of our signature. That's where the stump came from. You're seeing that. This is the signature, the bark pattern built right into the mold. This mold will be lined with a common plastic called polyethylene. We're buying polyethylene. It comes in a bead form, it comes in a tanker truck, and they blow it into our silo. The tiny pieces of plastic are about the same size as BB pellets when they enter the pulverizer. This machine grinds them to the same consistency of flour. The blind comes in two colors, weathered wood, which is a brown, or alpine green. We're gonna change the plastic from white now to our weathered wood. This stuff's pretty much like food coloring. 
The dyed powder is then brought into this large hopper, and each batch is measured and weighed for the perfect amount. We really got to get it to 275. Let's see if I can get it right on the head. You got to take your foot off the scale. Oh, sorry. Jeepers. Oh, I added 10 pounds to it. Yeah! I got it! About 20 times too long, right? Going up. Time to fill the mold. Before we do that, it's time for a quick break. But when we come back, we bake our blind. Woo! How's my hair, Mickey? Mickey, how's my hair? Supermodel hair. <laughs> and get back to our turkey hunt. You're watching Made for the Outdoors. Made for the Outdoors is brought to you by Escapade Campers. Minnesota Rebath. Border View Lodge and Absolute Trailer Sales. One of the reasons our blinds have taken off so well is because we made a round design. It's like 360 degree viewing out of our blinds. Banks Outdoors is located in Cannon Falls, Minnesota. Building a six and a half foot tall hunting blind that is also six and a half feet in diameter is no easy feat. It takes one large rotomolder. Once the polyethylene powder is weighed, it's dumped into the mold. The mold is then put into the largest oven I have ever seen and rotates for about 30 minutes at 650 degrees. This powder just starts sliding around and it starts eventually melting to the inside of the mold. And this next step is going to blow you away. Woo! How's my hair, Mickey? Mickey, how's my hair? It's good. Supermodel hair. It comes out of the oven and it goes into a cooling cycle and all these fans kick on and, and they cool the mold down. After the mold cools, Charlie and I work together to remove the lid. So you have 25 bolts. 25 bolts that I got. Now is this still hot? Because it, it was cooled, but is it like... It, it will still be warm. Okay, it's not... so you can actually touch it. Done. The one thing you're going to notice around here is these blinds are huge. So there's a lot of heavy lifting. We're heavy lifting all day. This thing alone, just the lid, weighs 400 pounds. Everyone get back. Get back. So now okay, we're, gonna we're going pick, up. We're going to pick it up. All right. And then it's going to swing back to you. OK. That's, we can lift that high enough. All right. Now we just push that out over the top. Time to blow the lid off this thing. When the cover comes off the mold, there's thread inserts and they'll screw in eye bolts and then the crane comes over and picks the part up and moves it over and drops it on the floor. So this is now our first look at our stump four coming out of the mold. Going up. Coming down. let it totally cool and shrink and do everything it's doing for a day. And then the next day, while they're running this uh, sh shots of this day, they're routing yesterday's parts and putting in the windows and the doors and, and so on. So now that we're done, we have our door hole. One, two, three, four, five windows and there's actually a sixth window in the door as well so you have a 360 view in your blind. This four-man hunting blind is spacious. There is 30 square feet of room inside. This age group that we're selling to um, are tired of hanging on the side of a tree. They want to take their grandkids hunting. They want to take the more than one person. Maybe the wife will go out if she's comfortable. Charlie then installs the floor. 
framed windows and doors. Sound and they're sealed up so they don't leak any water. Sound though, we have cabinet hinges with stays in them. So one of the most important things is a quiet window and these are pretty much soundproof. So you don't want a window that's gonna go as you open it. These windows are so quiet, they make no noise. Ooh, a 12 pointer, get down Mickey. Wide load coming through. Looking good, up. Oh, a little too Whoa. far this way. Darn it. Here she comes. The stump floor is completed. I made it without crashing.